long has it been? It must be over an hour. God, I'm bored. They made me turn off my mobile phone when I arrived, so I can't play Wordle or hook up with my online Scrabble buddies. A few tired old magazines are scattered around, but I read them earlier. All I can do is sit and stare at these four walls, painted a sickly shade of hospital green. That's how I got into this. The hospital. <laughs> I needed an op to straighten my spine when I was little. My mum bought me puzzle books to help pass the time while I recovered. Pretty soon I was hooked on word searches and anagrams. I've loved them ever since. There's a TV in the corner and I managed to turn it on but the sound's off and I can't see a remote control anywhere. I played along with the chase for a bit but it's, it's not really my thing. I've always preferred Countdown and this year I finally plucked up the courage to apply. This will be my seventh show in two days. <laughs> not bad, eh? It was fun at first but the novelty has worn off. There's no way I want to be overnighted again. I don't want to be stuck in that ugly hotel on the edge of town. I want to go home. Six wins should be more than enough to see me through to the finals. I won't be seeded, but I can live with that. If I chuck in a few five-letter words and deliberately miss out in the numbers round, I can leave today with my head held high and my countdown teapot under my arm. <laughs> Arthur's waiting for me at home. I miss him so much. I miss holding him close and, and feeling his heartbeat next to mine. He'll be missing me too. Oh, the look he gave me when I left. Sue next door, she's, well, she's promised to look in on him, but he won't get any cuddles off her. She's not really a cat person. They keep the contestants apart. I suppose they don't want us to get too friendly. I mean, we are rivals after all. I understand that, but God, the hanging around between shows, it's mind-numbing. At last, there's a knock on the door. It's a makeup lady, Claire. I don't usually wear makeup, and thankfully she goes easy on me. Just enough to take the shine off, she says, <laughs> then leads me into the studio, past the technicians and the cameramen. There's wires everywhere. Be careful not to trip, she says. The set is really cheap and tacky close up. It's the lights that make it look spectacular. When they power them up, oh, the magic happens. My next opponent's already taken his place. Andy, his nameplate says. He looks nervous as hell and he, he's dabbing the sweat from his brow with a tissue. Claire goes to work on him. Don't worry, you'll be fine, she says. Oh, he doesn't look fine. Anything but... There's a heavily pregnant woman on, on the front row and, and she mouths, relax, to him. He gives her a weak grin and nods. But still, oh, the sweat pours down his face. Hi, I'm Carol, I say. I've heard that you've won six shows already. Oh, you know, I got lucky. <laughs> you don't win six shows by being lucky. You must be shit hot. I should have applied to Ready Steady Cook instead. It was a toss up between the two. Oh, so can you cook? Not really, but I'd have give it a go. <laughs> I want to tell him that he's got nothing to worry about. The game is his for the taking. But of course I can't. An awful warm-up comedian is trying to keep the audience entertained with his lame jokes. Most of them are pensioners. It's going to take more than a third-rate comic to liven them up. If he tells the one about taking a girl from North Wales back to Bangor again, I swear, I'll scream. Hasn't he heard a political correctness? Fortunately, his act is interrupted when Colin, Rachel and Susie swan into the set like royalty. The crowd applaud and, and we're good to go. Colin introduces me as a six-time champion and he has a brief chat with Andy. It turns out he's from Liverpool and Colin says he's a huge Liverpool fan. Andy says he supports Everton. Oh, talk about a conversation killer. I'm up first. I deliberately pick lots of vowels to make it easier for Andy. But he seems mesmerised by Rachel Rangley's cleavage. He's paying more attention to her than the letters. Finally, he starts jotting down some words on his pad. Immune is there for the taking. It's six, but I declare five. Lumin. Andy says he has a nine-letter word. And he looks really pleased with himself. What? 
He's used all the letters. How's he managed that? I look again. Oh, no, he hasn't, has he? Colin asks what his nine-letter word is. Don't say it, Andy. Don't say it. Millennium, he says proudly. Oh, Andy. There's a brief pause before Susie interjects. I'm afraid there's two ends in Millennium. Of course there is. And one T in twonk. Oh, what was he thinking? His face turns beetroot. He looks like he wants the ground to open up and swallow him. Come on, Andy, there's plenty of time to recover. I'm only five nil up. I declare six. The next word game, reveal. There's another E and a D, which will give him revealed. But no, he goes for reveal too. Oh. Next, it's the numbers game. I deliberately miss out by one, but he gets in a flap and declares nothing. Oh, I'm, I'm walking away with this game without even trying. By the time we reach the conundrum, I'm home and dry. I get it in five seconds, but I wait till 59 before buzzing in. I want to give Andy the chance to leave with some dignity. But he's completely brain dead by this point. Appropriately enough, today's word is pointless. And Colin makes a joke about promoting a rival show. And we're done. Game over. Andy's wife storms over to him, a face like thunder. That's it, Andy. No more. I'll stick to quiz shows from now on, he says. You'll stick to stamp collecting. You've embarrassed us for the last time. I hope to God none of the girls from the office watch this. At least he'll have a countdown teapot to show for his efforts, I say. He can shove it up in the loft with his bendy bully. What? He's been on bully? Let's see what you could have won. Wonderful, marvellous, smashing. Oh, I would have loved to have been on bully. It looked like so much fun, and I'm quite good at darts. <laughs> I used to play with me dad. Oh, don't let her ride your bendy bully and your teapot in the loft, Andy. They should have pride of place on your mantelpiece. OK, you lost, but at least you had a go. I've been toying with applying to Mastermind for years. Specialist subject, Jane Austen, of course. I send off for an application form every series, but... But when it comes down to it, I lose my nerve, afraid of making a fool out of myself. At least you were brave enough to have a go. At least you tried. You didn't just settle for playing along at home. There's a new lottery show, he says. Forget it, she snaps. I want to shout, you go for it, Andy. Maybe next time the stars will align. Maybe next time you'll get lucky. But of course I say nothing. They pause for a quick selfie with Rachel Riley and then they're gone. When I get home, I'm going to find that mastermind application form. I will not bottle out this time. Before you know it, I'll, I'll be in that leather chair under the spotlight doing my damnedest. And I may not win, but at least I'll have tried. The producer walks towards me. Not so impressive that time, Carol, he says. Does he know what I was up to? And isn't that the second outing for that top? Oh, I'd worn it on show one. I didn't expect to be here for so long. If you wear red again, you'll have Christy Burr singing songs about you, he jokes. I've had a word with wardrobe and Annie from wardrobe enters on cue carrying a horrendous, low-cut, flowery blouse. I'm sorry, but I cannot possibly wear that, I say. Oh, that's not for you. It's Rachel's outfit for tomorrow, he laughs. Did you hear that, Rachel? Carol is slagging off your blouse. Oh, she's got a face on her like a bulldog chewing a wasp. Oh, I think she heard all right. I make a quick exit and I jump in a taxi back to the hotel. Oh, Arthur will have to last another night without me. Maybe I can chat with him on FaceTime later. I know, I'm going to send Sue a text. <laughs>